Okay, YouTube, so I'm going to spend a little time in this video and I'm going to focus solely on the uh, means of erasing graphite, even some charcoal uh, from your uh, art, your drawings, and so forth. And what you see before you here is the um, erasers that I currently have and I currently use. And I figured I'd just go ahead and, and talk about them and and how you could use them and where you may not want to use them, some tips and tricks, whatever. I, as it comes to me, I'll share it with you in this video. So, I guess the first thing we can do is start talking about what all this stuff is. And I'm going to uh, do that by first getting this all out of the way. And... Here is some drawing paper with graphite blended all over it so that I have plenty of area here to erase. One of the tools that I like to use a lot in drawing is something called the kneaded eraser. And it's called that because you can knead it. You can see just move it around like so. And to clean it, you stretch it and fold it back into itself and that's how this eraser is cleaned and you can reuse it over and over and over again for a long time as a matter of fact this one here is brand new I've only used it a couple of times and it replaced my old kneaded eraser that I had used since the day I first started drawing uh, about four years ago and so it was four years, maybe going on five years. Well, not yet, four years. So uh, that's how old it was. That's how long I've been using it. And I could have kept on using it, but I didn't want to use an old, dirty, kneaded eraser for the video. So just for the sake of uh, showing this to all of you out there, I threw it away and decided to use a brand new one. Why not? And there you go. Kneaded eraser all nice and clean. Now these uh, kneaded erasers uh, outside the United States they're often called putty rubbers uh, but here we call them kneaded erasers in the US and they have kind of a plastic consistency and uh, I would say that the majority of artists, pencil artists, will have a kneaded eraser. It is just that common. Now the nice thing about these kneaded erasers is you can shape them to like different shapes to do different things like making textures for example or to just spot erase. For example, I can make a point like this using the kneaded eraser if there are little areas that I want to pick off of my art. And a lot of times when you're drawing like skin textures or, uh, you know, little details and so forth, and you just need to take a little bit off, but you don't want to go all the way to the white of the paper, it is really nice to use this because it, it only picks up a little bit at a time. So you'd have to keep dabbing and then reshaping the... Um, needed eraser to get a nice clean area there again to continue on until you get the shape and shade that you want. You can also form it like you can give it kind of like a chiseled into it like this. For example, if you wanted to kind of do like lines, thin lines, for example, I'm getting a little bit here so you can see little things like that. Uh, one of the things I like to really use this for is I'll, I'll make a point and let's say this is uh, the skin of a person uh, that I'm drawing and I may come in here for example and just dab in one little area just to get it nice and light in that area right there. I don't know if you can see that little dot there and then I'll take my pencil and I'll just kind of shade it on one side of that little dot and give the appearance that it's pore or a pimple. And you do this within the face and you make these nice little details. 
Now, the thing with these uh, kneaded erasers is that uh, over time, they're going to gather a lot of the graphite that you've picked up or charcoal, whatever you've been using it on, and it, it'll start to lose its ability to pick up uh, material. Now, like I mentioned, I used mine for four years, but you know I've not done hundreds and hundreds of drawings. I've only done maybe a, a, a dozen so over that period of time. So you know it was really coming to the end of its life, and at that point too, you know it will it will lose some of its um, pliability. It will it will get a little stiffer as it starts to lose some of its moisture. Right now, this here is really really soft and I can really do a lot with it. Also I want to mention with these is that you can use these to make some pretty cool textures and stuff. For example, let's say I, I can make it into a stamp like this flattening the end and then I can dimple it. So I'll find something here to, to dimple it with. I'll get another eraser here for example. And let's say I, I'm going to put some dimples in here like so. You can come in here and you can make these little patterns. See? So there are different things you can do with this, but for me personally, uh, the majority of my work will be uh, to take out fine details and to, you know, draw in lines for uh, wrinkles. So I can come into a person's forehead or whatever, draw a white, little light white line, and then take my pencil, and on one side or the other of that white line, I can just slightly darken it, and it will give the impression of a wrinkle in the person's forehead. So very good use for the kneaded eraser. Now. Another eraser that's very common to, especially school kids, you know, you would find these on the, on the end of um, the pencils, these pink erasers as they would call it. These things here originally were made from natural rubber, but that's expensive these days. So now they use cheaper uh, materials, something they call styrene butadiene, uh, or this is styrene butadiene rubber, SBR, and it's a synthetic rubber. And uh, these here uh, basically are quite uh, abrasive. Uh, you can use them in your drawing art if you like. For example, they do a good job of erasing. They do leave a little bit of a mess. I'll blow that away. Normally you wouldn't do that on your drawing. You'd probably use your horsehair brush or shake the paper like, like so. The thing that I would caution about using these pink erasers such as this one and, and this one right here is that uh, they can cause a little more damage to the paper itself and you need to be very careful about damaging the um, fibers of the paper. Thus, using uh, different kinds of erasers are usually uh, preferred unless you have something really, really stubborn. Then you might use something like this and be aggressive with it. Uh, but then again, of course, you will likely damage the paper surface underneath. And this is referred to as a, a vinyl eraser. Uh, oftentimes, it'll be advertised as latex free vinyl eraser. Um, some call them plastic erasers. They're soft, uh, non-abrasive, and uh, they're very clean when you erase with them. Much cleaner than other erasers, even though that does leave a little bit, but they're much cleaner. There's another kind of eraser which I don't have. It's called the Artist Gum Eraser. They are more brown. You've probably seen those. They're, they're kind of tan or brownish you know sometimes you see them they're blue and when you erase it all the graphite uh, comes off the paper 
gets bound up into the little chunks of the eraser that falls off. So you end up with these chunks of erasers. You may have seen it uh, just way worse than any of these other ones I'm going to show you here. And, uh, but that's what gathers up your charcoal or your graphite. And so you have to be careful when you're getting that off your paper because uh, just trying to brush it off, even gently, those little bits of eraser will leave marks all over your drawing. So I would not advise using the old artist gum erasers for your drawings, but stick with these uh, vinyl plastic type uh, white erasers. And they come in different things like, for example, let me move back out again. For example, you have these pen type erasers. This one here is a Stadler Mars plastic. They make a really good uh, plastic or uh, vinyl uh, eraser and this one here you can you know you can set how long you want the eraser to come out and then I tend to shave off the end and give it a point so that I can do you know like hairs and whiskers and things like that you can see the kind of precision I can get doing that and let me just scan that so you can see that see so you can make nice little hairs, highlights in hair. You can um, make little whiskers coming off of a, of a kitty uh, like this, for example. So all you have to do is just, of course, grab yourself an exact exacto blade and then just shave it into a nice little wedge. Now, other pencils that are erasers that I have of the pencil type, for example, here's one that's called uh, the Tough Stuff Eraser Stick. Same thing, I sh I'll shave it into a, uh, see if you can see that there, a nice thin edge so that I can make these uh, nice thin lines. Very precise. And you can also get those erasers already nice and thin. This is a very thin one you can compare with the thicker one that I just showed you here or, or even the more monstrous one right here from Stadler. These small ones like this uh, Tombow Mono Zero, which I use a lot, is really nice. And you can take these uh, little small uh, tips here and you can grind it down on your sandpaper or you can just use a clean area on a, or a different piece of paper would be preferred than your drawing but you can just rub it in a circular motion if you want to make a point or you can just rub it on one side if you want to make a wedge and once you get what you need this helps you to do nice little removal of graphite like right here, I can just make lots of little pores in the skin or whatever the case may be. And you can see the little details that I can do with my Tombow. Okay. So those are your, those are your white uh, vinyl or plastic type erasers. And uh, these are very kind to the paper. Of course, any eraser, if you keep erasing in one area too long, uh, you will damage the paper. So be mindful that there are no erasers uh, other than I think maybe the kneaded eraser uh, where it would be probably difficult to hurt the paper. But all the other ones, um, they can hurt the paper fibers if you keep rubbing them too long. But these white vinyl or plastic, depending on what you want to call it, type erasers, uh, they are gentle on the paper, you know, when you're doing the initial erasing, but don't just keep doing it in one spot too long. It's called overworking and it will eventually cause you a problem. These pink ones though, they don't take that much time to ruin the paper. So unless you really have something stubborn, well, don't use them. Now, as far as those white vinyls, I'm going to go even further here and talk about 
uh, the white vinyls and the electric. Here's an electric and they turn on, you can see at the end there, it, it's turning and it allows you to come in here and just do stuff like this. Now this one here, the battery is probably a little low. It looks like they're rechargeable, so I got to recharge that. Here's one, a uh, 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 hoo hoo, a uh, hoo hoo, and this one here. You can hear it. Now what's really good about these is, for example, maybe you have a, a drawing of an eye or something, and you want to get the little highlights into that eye. Well, you could, of course, use something like this but you won't normally be able to get it, the white of the paper using this because you, you'd have to rub it and to really rub it you have to move a little bit further left and right than just trying to move this circular in, in a small dot because you just don't have enough friction to get it really white white. So there is my uh, Tombo and I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to get this little area here and if I try to do too much it just makes it too big and if I just want a tiny little white dot uh, this is going to be a little hard for me to do this to get it as white as the paper however if I have this thing here and I have it sharpened down to a point and I'll show you another tool that's really good for this but if I have this down to a point and I can turn this on and just Well, I seem to have lost my, there we go. And I'm going to go real carefully here. Okay, now I want you to see the difference here. There's with the electric, there's with the Tombow. See how the Tombow was not as clean as the electric? That will really bring out the sparkle in an eye or some detail like in water or moisture around the lips or eyes or teeth or whatever and you you're able to put this the white of white in in these particular dark areas of your drawing will really bring out the contrast and that's what's really handy about these electric racers also the nice thing about an electric is if you have something that is kind of stubborn and you don't want to use the old pink eraser for stubborn you could try the electric first and try to see if you can get it out with that. But just like with the pink eraser though, you have to be cautious. If you work an area too much, you can really destroy the paper fiber and that's not a good thing. It can really ruin a whole drawing, all the work you've done on it. Now, I mentioned another tool for making very minute uh, detail and that is this electric eraser and you'll notice that it has the same uh, thin diameter plastic eraser to it, white plastic eraser, as the Tombow uh, Mono Zero. And so this is great for small details, just like what I just did here, and is actually better than using the fatter diameter that I just did, although you can see that it did work though. And you can come in here and easily just And I'm going to show you, look at, the, look at how detailed that is in compared to the other electric. I was able to make it even smaller. So you can do a whole lot with these electric erasers for your um, drawing, for details and so forth. Now, in the way of these pink erasers that I had already mentioned, like this one here, and the end of a pencil, for example, uh, they do have these uh, pink erasers that come in pencil form like this here where you just sharpen it like you would in a regular pencil sharpener. Now, these are good because they act like pencil, like pink erasers in that they will basically erase stubborn stuff and instead of doing wholesale damage to your paper with these bigger ones, this one will be a little more precise so that if you want to use them, uh, you can just, again, beware that they are the rougher pink erasers.
but some people still use them. They want to put details and hair and whatever, and they like the feel of having a pencil in their hand. Personally, I do not recommend them uh, for that purpose, and I hardly ever use this particular type of eraser, but I did want to introduce this one to you because some artists do like to use it. I don't know if they like to use it because they just don't happen to have a uh, Tombow Mono 100 because it really doesn't make sense to me to use this if you got something like this. And that is my personal opinion. I don't see any advantage to applying a pink eraser to your paper when you can use the softer white uh, type plastic or vinyl erasers which will do the job for you. Now, here is another one of those white vinyl erasers and yes, I, I tend to talk a lot about these because of the fact that um, they are very useful but I'm bringing this one up for a very special reason and that is that you can take these and you can take your exacto knife and you can cut off slivers like little wedges. So I'm going to cut off a wedge here just to demonstrate. Okay, and you're going to get a lot of them out of one of these erasers. But as you can see, I just cut this sliver out. Now what can you use this for? I'm going to show you. I have here a chopstick and on the end of this chopstick you can see that I already have a old sliver of one of these uh, white plastic or vinyl erasers. And these are great, for example, if you've ever watched my videos on drawing black hair where you have uh, highlights that need to be drawn in, I'll draw the hair, for example, or the dark areas. Then I will take this uh, chopsticks with the sliver on the end of it and I will just go through and just in the areas that need highlights I'll just go like this and I'll be able to get highlights in the hair because it makes these nice thin lines. So this is just another way gives you more to hold on to and you have an endless supply if you have one of these erasers you can be cutting these little slivers out uh, every time you need a new one. I've had this one on here for a long time they last a long time and as you can see Look at how nice it makes these highlight lines here. Very thin lines. Great for drawing hair, for example. That's what I mostly use it for, is drawing the highlights in hair. See? Perfect. And how you do that is you, you would cut a slit down the middle of the um, chopstick and slide this down inside between the two and then you can use string, in this case I'm using tape, to hold that eraser uh, wedge in there. So anyway, chopsticks, you can get them almost anywhere. But there you go, that's that. Now before we end this uh, video on erasers, I do want to introduce one other, which is really not an eraser, but it does have uh, erasing uh, ability. Now, I am not sponsored by this company, Boss Tech, but this is called Blue Tack, and it's an adhesive that you use to uh, hold um, posters and stuff on your wall. So they call this poster putty. It comes in something like this, and you, you just kind of tear off one of these. And let me show you what's really cool about Blue Tack. This stuff is pretty sticky. So it looks like gum, but you just do this with it. Now, what does this what does this remind you of? You need an eraser? Yes. Except this has much more tack to it than a needed eraser. Now we already know that a needed eraser, you can form it and you can use it to take off small amounts of of your uh, graphite. So I'll go in this area right here and you can see you know you can start lightening the area and that's what's really good about these is you can shape them and you can uh, just lighten the area without it just erasing everything all at once. 
then the more you keep cleaning it and going in the same spot, it gets lighter. Well, you can take these blue tacks, and let's say we'll also shape it. And this thing here has a little more sticky um, power to it. And so you can see the same number of taps, but look what it did. And again, I can come in here to clean it up, just stretch it and fold it into itself. Now I want to make a nice little point like I did before. And then I can start taking off small amounts in different areas. Clean it. So as you can see, it picks up really well. So this is going to have much more pickup power than your needed eraser. And if you can get your hands on Blue Tech, I got mine online, so it wasn't that difficult to get. Uh, what's really nice is you can use this for the, a really, really, really long time. It's inexpensive. You get a whole bunch of them in here. I think like four or five. I'm not quite sure how many comes in these things. But I mean, I'll be able to use this one here for many, many months and months and months. So there you go. Another way to erase. Oh, and I want to show you something. It's not an eraser, but since we are talking a little bit about tips of erasing, uh, I want to talk about uh, the chamois. This is a uh, art chamois here. Mine's pretty dirty. It could use a little cleaning. I just really uh, worry about getting it wet because it gets stiff. But the nice thing about a chamois is a chamois does not erase, but it does lighten. And it's really useful for that. For example, you may have an area of your drawing where you'd like to lighten it up a little bit. Um, you could, of course, go in with an eraser and try to do that, but if you use your chamois, and let's see if I get an area here on my chamois, so I'm going to come over here in this corner here, and I'm just going to kind of go like this, and I think you should see right away the effect that this chamois has in lightening the area. So this is very useful for taking graphite off. So usually the chamois is used as a blending tool, but you have to know that blending does lighten areas. I think it's pretty obvious that it has minimal racing capabilities. Look at that. Okay. So that's another thing you want to have, not just for blending, but also because you can lighten areas on a, on a portrait or something. And you can see, well, this cheek is a little bit lighter. I'm going to lighten that up a little bit on the cheek there and maybe the chin or whatever the case may be. Uh, and so you can use it like you would any other eraser that you're not trying to get it down to the white of the paper. You're just trying to tone it down some. And that's what a kneaded eraser does is it tones it down. Oh, you know what? And some other things are coming to, to me as well is when it comes to kneaded erasers, they're not really good for erasing big areas. In other words, don't use a kneaded eraser trying to erase large areas because they get dirty too quick and you're going to be constantly having to do uh, the molding and, and cleaning it like this. It's just not made for big areas. Use it for just small remote areas or whatever you're working on. For big areas, use these erasers and go whole hog with them for big areas. Avoid the pink erasers unless you absolutely positively don't feel that your white eraser is getting enough off the paper and you think that you need more off and you are willing to risk damaging the uh, paper fiber, then you can take your pink eraser and come in here and try to uh, take more off, but you will, of course, damage the paper. But there, I got a little bit more off than I was able to with the white vinyl.
But then now that paper there, that area there, the fibers of the paper are pretty well shot. If I try to draw in there right now, it's going to be a different type of an effect than if I was to draw in the neighboring area. Okay, now what I'd like to also show you is a uh, tool that you can use with your eraser. It's not an eraser, but you use it with your eraser. And this is an eraser shield type tool. You notice it has different cutout shapes. Usually it's made out of this very thin metal material, kind of a thick foil material. And what's really good about this is that it allows you to be very um, refined with your erasing. For example, if you want to, uh, I'm going to take this eraser right here because it's a pin eraser. So let's say, for example, that you wanted to clean up an area along an edge, such as right here. So I can take this straight line. I got like three of them here of different widths. So I'll, let me take this small one, for example, and I could align it where I want it and then come in with my eraser and erase in there and make some nice sharp edges as you can see right there. Want to clean it up, just come in here, find the shape that matches closely to what you're trying to do and and erase. And you can make nice sharp edges. Now you'll also notice that we have these nice little uh, circles along the length here. And what you can do with these is before, remember I showed you that you can come in here, let's say with your kneaded eraser with a point on it, or you can use a, uh, the Tombow, for example, that uh, has a very small tip on it or the electric which I put a very small tip on it and let's just say that um, you wanted to come in here and, and, and just make a nice little white dot somewhere but you want it perfectly round and you're afraid that maybe you won't get it so precise well with this you're going to get it precise I'll put three of them there and you can see it three perfect circles. So you got curves of different um, aggressiveness as you can see here, teardrops, different widths and lengths and you could just use this to find what it is that you're trying to uh, erase the shapes or whatever and get in there and this will make sure that you don't go beyond the shield itself. There you go. Okay, so that's another nice little useful tool to have around uh, if you really want to get refined edges and uh, dots on your uh, artwork. Okay folks, well I think I've covered a lot about erasers, probably a lot more than you've seen anywhere else, which was my goal. I hope you learned something from this. Um, if you have thoughts about erasers you want to share, something I may have missed, uh, please mention it in the comment, comment section below. But there you go, blue tack, kneaded, pink, white vinyl plastic, which comes in all kinds of shapes and pin sizes and electric. There you go. Alright, if you like this, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't done so already, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.